Hello, fellow guitar geeks. Today I'm looking at a semi hollow body, a small semi hollow body, that's hard to say, from Ivanez, the AMH90 CRF, nonetheless. Look at it. Let's take a moment to have a look at how gorgeous this guitar is. It's matte red, gold hardware, woodeny kind of knobs, and a taut guard with an ebony fretboard, and all this stuff going on up here. You've seen the front, you've seen the F-holes, and now look at the back. Now look at the front again. Now look at me. Now look at the back again. Now look at the headstock. Yeah, I dig the look of this guitar heavily. And um, I thought I'd bring you a video in which I don't use it for jazz, and it's not because I can't play jazz. It's because I've seen a few videos featuring this guitar um, and the other one, the black one, and it's, it's all jazz. And while this, according to those videos, does make a great jazz guitar, it sounds phenomenal in the hands of those players, it wouldn't sound phenomenal in the hands of this player, so I thought I'd bring out the rock side of it. <laughs> Now you might notice that when I play guitars they tend to look small because I, I'm tall, I'm a, I'm a long person. But this one actually is smaller than say a 335 or a standard semi-hollow body double cutaway with the two Mickey Mouse style ears. This one is more like, if you know it, uh, the Epiphone Casino Coupe where they did a slightly smaller body and I don't think it looks small on me but it is extremely wieldy. You can, it's, it's just, so it's like a, like a sports version. Ah, coupe. I, I love this guitar. The color does it. It's uh, it's Johnny B. Good. It's Back to the Future. It's Chuck Berry. It's Marvin Berry. It's his cousin on the phone. It is that sort of look. And um, it just let us have another look at it. Look at it. <laughs> I want to play it some more because I've been playing it for weeks and months and enjoying it. It's been a couch guitar, it's been a studio guitar, I've played it in other videos with fuzz and rock and everything. However, you probably want to know some specs and what the guitar is made of and where it's made. Let's start with where. It is made in Indonesia and it is made a very well. Let's have a look at the busy side, the body. We've got, uh, it's just so gorgeous, we've got two gold Super 58s. We've got a three-way switch to switch between those two humbuckers. Then we've got two volumes, two tones. We have a three-way little switch here. One, two, three, which is to mess around with the neck pickup. I will go over that in a little bit. Let's talk woods. Now, it is not made of the most recognizable woods like a Gibson or something like that would be. It is made of lime or basswood, uh, linda in, in the German. And we've got linda, linda, linda. Um, so basswood, basswood. Uh, I've just noticed that the, the bevel on that, that's not straight. Hang on, can you see that? It comes out beautifully. I haven't noticed that before. Before, you know, picking it up 27 times in the past few months. Um, the neck is made of a, what I would call a typical Ibanez wood, but don't be put off by the fact that it's called Nyoto. Uh, on, on the specs it says Nyoto uh, maple, which, which, let's look at it, is... I don't, uh, there it is, on the back. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on in there apart from what it says on the spec sheet. All I can tell you is that it feels and sounds brilliant. And as a guitar player who who actually cares about sound, you should just be worried about the sound and the feel uh, and, and the quality. And, and that's there. That is absolutely there. Also there is the ebony fretboard, which I'll be honest, 
I'd I'd rather they spent the money on the ebony fretboard than on something else in the neck. Um, I'm making it sound as if the neck is, is lower than it's lower quality than it should be. It isn't. It feels sublime. It is a matte finish. So matte finish all over, which is my kind of second favorite finish. Favorite finish on a body. On the neck, my favorite finish is an oiled bare wood finish. This comes a very close second. And being a poly finish, it it very almost feels like nitro in the sense that it feels like there's not much between you and the wood inside, which I think is extremely important. Up the top, we've got a fairy door. Now, I'm not sure that's what Ibanez call it, but that's what my daughter calls it, so that's what we're calling it today. And there we go. I can open the door with my pick like that and have almost instant, under 10 second access to the truss rod. So I love this because you don't need a screwdriver. You're not weakening those holes when you're unscrewing and screwing those screws. Um, and then you can also cover it up so you don't get an ugly little hole. Brilliant. I, I wish more brands would do stuff like that. I, I like I like the fairy door concept. Um, we've got this, which let's go to that camera again. It looks, I don't know what that is. It looks like half between some sort of devil and some sort of moosey kind of deer thing. I wonder what they call that, but um, I think it looks great. Like a, like a flamey devil moose. It's like a, one of those Rorschach tests that you know what you see actually gives away more information about who you are rather than what is actually there and then of course we've got Ibanez written on the top um, I love this Ibanez headstock thing it's so uh, classic but yet so um, modern oh, that's a horrible thing to say sounds seems a real marketing um I just like it you know what I mean I just like it on the back uh, or all over we've got some Ibanez machine heads so they are not branded in any way they're just standard Ibanez they do the job fine I couldn't find the exact information on the nut material but it looks like plastic it feels like plastic and it smells of nothing which probably means it's plastic and I had to put some string lube uh, some nut lube in there because it was pinging a little bit so there's a little bit of binding in that nut that being said, the nut is cut very, very well, and the guitar is set up beautifully. What else haven't I talked about? Abalone uh, dots. Um, I think that would look amazing with blocks, but, you know, dots are understated. You do get more of the ebony, I guess, there. Then we've got this Gibraltar uh, bridge. That's the Gibraltar uh, performer bridge. And then we've got the, let me remember, the tailpiece is a VT or V106, VT06? VT06, which is the name that Ibanez give it. A tip here, if you are playing rock, this thing rings out a little bit. So let me play a little bit more for you and you'll hear a little bit of ringing that you kind of need to dampen. Here is uh, some rockiness. The behind the bridge tones. Which I, oh, which I love to use as an effect for like when you're really rocking. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh. Oops. Just broke a string. I'll have to change that. <laughs> the fact that I've just broken a string shouldn't be seen as a fault in the guitar. I've been playing the guitar a lot and um, it actually gives me the opportunity to show you how to change a string on this guitar because it's not like a normal, oh, I say normal, a regular tail piece that we're, we're used to on say like a Les Paul. On a Les Paul you have to feed the string all the way through. On this one it's just these slots so you can actually just slot the string in like so. So you put it behind, I'm going to pull mine up and that's it. And then you feed the string through like, like you would um, any other guitar. But uh, that means for me that's quicker but it does mean it can kind of fall out if you don't keep it under tension and I, I can't really see ah the lights are making it difficult for me to see the little hole <laughs>
Right, we're back with six strings on the AMH90. I now remember where I was before uh, string gate. It was the behind the bridge overtone things with the with the tailpiece and the bridge. This piece just here. So with distortion or with overdrive, I should say, this is the ret. You can really kind of hear it. So when it's there, when playing rock with this guitar, I'd recommend putting like a, a piece of ribbon or something between between these these strings. Um, you can even just dampen it. Like I've got this thing here that I use to keep my pedals still. Thanks, Henning. Anything resting on those strings will stop that. So if, like me, you prefer something with a bit of grunt, a bit of distortion or overdrive, and you want to play this guitar, I would really recommend doing something with those strings just there, just to make sure that you've got control of what the sound is coming out of the guitar. That is not a fault of the guitar, that's just how it is. If you want a tone that has a tailpiece, um, and you want to use it for jazz, oh look, that's still stuck on there. <laughs> um, then that's fine, but if you want to put some pedals or put it through a, a hot amp, then um, you should adjust the guitar accordingly. Let's talk about the tri-sound switch, this mysterious extra tonal option. It's a three-way switch which controls various functions of the neck pickup, so it does nothing to the bridge pickup. So if you're in bridge mode, it does nothing. If you're in neck mode, it does something. If you're in the middle, it does something because it's affecting the neck. So if you're using this tri-sound switch and nothing's changing in the sound, it might mean that you're in the bridge position. The more you know. Not that I just did that before making this video and wondered if I'd broken the guitar. Whoops. Yeah, so neck pickup I'm going to use rather than the middle so we can really hear this pickup. In the downy mode, it's just a normal humbucker. It's as if this switch doesn't exist. <laughs> Put it in the middle and we've got a split coil. So make sure we're on the neck pickup. Make sure this is in the middle. This gives us a, a single coil kind of sound. Thinner, more strap, more tailor-like if we're gonna you know, liken it to something. It's not the humbucker, it's not a big, fat, warm sound. It is still warm and not thin. Compared to the humbucker, not as loud, not as big, because we're only using one coil. When it's in the uppy mode, rather than have this humbucker have the individual coils in series, meaning running through one, then through the other, they're in parallel. Let's quickly run through those three sounds. So first it's gonna be normal humbucker mode, then the split coil, then the parallel coils, just to hear the sound. Then I'll do some, some, some drive as well. You might notice the drop in sound in that middle position because it's using only one of the coils. That's to be expected. So if you're gonna do that, you're gonna to need to either boost the sound with something else or use some kind of compressor to bring that sound up. That was clean, of course. I wonder how it sounds like with some drive. So I've got the uh, SD1 from Boss. Then we've got humbucker mode, we've got split coil mode, and we've got parallel mode. I'll do that without talking in between. 
Tonally, it opens up the guitar. I, I don't know why it's not on the bridge pickup. I guess it makes it more complicated. I guess if this is um, aimed at jazz players, then they just want some different tones. Like if you were playing jazz, which I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, um, then that would make the very warm neck pickup slightly less warm and then differently warm. Uh, I wonder if it can get some sort of like stretty, sort of John Mary blues thing that's quite popular at the moment. I'll, I'll, I'll attempt that. Yeah, that's that's quite different and, and opens up the tonal possibilities of the guitar. But I enjoy this guitar most when it's put through some distortion or some fuzz because it vibrates and gives you that wonderful feedback that these uh, semi-hollow bodies do. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to put the SD1 into the Rat, which gets super fuzzy. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I like the way it does that. I like the way that, I mean, any guitar will feed back, but certain guitars feed back nicely. Certain guitars feed back, just, it's just feedback. But this one, the, the controls, the tones, the harmonics that's coming out of the body, it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's just, it, it enhances what you'd already get if you're using a solid body. And it's not, you know, obviously not just this guitar, but this is one of those ones that will do it if that sort of excited you. Excited me, I've got to catch my breath there. <laughs> let's go over the guitar, let's do the review part of the video, and then I have to at some point send this back to Ibanez, but I'm not releasing this video until they ask for it back, because maybe they forget about it? All right, review time. Hear me now, the AMH90 CRF is a wonderful guitar, not just for the money, so 649 is not a cheap guitar. It's not something, uh, something like this, where is it, there. I can't quite get it. The Harley Benton there is about 200 bucks. That's a relatively cheap guitar. This is sort of intermediate to, you know, you, you might want not want to go out on a weekend and accidentally drop 649 on a guitar. Whereas, you know, one of those or an Ibanez Geo, if you want to keep it Ibanez, fine. This one requires some thinking, so that might be why you're watching this video. If you are looking for a semi-hollow body guitar that does jazz, then it does it, but please go and watch somebody else's video to prove that it does it. What I like about this guitar, and, and, and if you're gonna do something that's soft and beautiful, then you can really affect the, the vibrato, those those notes with the with the wobbly bend. Really sounds gorgeous. Just wanna play those notes for a very, very long time and just keep bending that neck. So I would recommend that highly. If you're looking for something where you're doing a solo show or something, and you've got lots of reverb and maybe some some, some tremolo, uh, and then you want to give the notes that the little warble. Beautiful. Um, yeah, so it does jazz, but watch other channels if you want to really experience that. What I like is that it does raucous rock when the guitar is clearly aimed at jazz players, which is not to say 
that Ibanez haven't sneakily thought, maybe some rock guys will play this, but I like riffing on this thing, is what I'm trying to say. So if you have a smaller body, then maybe after a smaller body, not thin, but not thick, semi-hollow. This could be the one. The pickups are great, the electronics are great. You don't need to change anything, but make sure the nut is well lubed. It's come to me very well serviced, very well, um, what's the word, prepared. I, it gigs straight out the box, no question there. I love the feel of this neck. This is probably the reason I don't want to give it back. This, this, this neck is just divine. Um, there's nothing about this finish or, or the way this guitar is that makes me dislike it. I think for the money, it's bang on. I think that you're actually getting a little bit more for your money. I think that the guitars that would look like this, sound like this, would cost more money. Look at it. Look at it, he says. <laughs> Let's put it on that camera. It's just, I grew up with Back to the Future and Johnny B. Good, and this is the guitar that kind of scratches that itch. The feel that Ibanez have put on this neck and the whole body is absolutely beautiful. It's just, it's, it's what other guitars should aspire to be, put it that way. As I said the word aspire, then it means it's the end of the video. And if it is the end of the video and you're here, it means you've made it to the end of the video, which means you're in the end of the video club and to prove that you are a member of this prestigious elite. When you leave your comment down below, please also include the phrase aspire. That'll make me chuckle to see many of you writing that same word so we're all together and also it helps other people watch this video, quite frankly. Thanks for doing that. Thank you to you for watching. Thank you to Ibanez. Also, hate you Ibanez because I've got to give this back and I don't want to because it is that good. There are videos there, just roughly there. You can watch those if you, if you want some more. And if you really enjoyed yourself, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on the video so other people get to see this as well. I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.